what do you want for it? We went to and from, and after a little while of just sorry, mate, bear with me. After a little while of discussion, he came to the point of wanting two grand. So yes, you'll take two. Cool, he'll take two grand for the car. Welcome to the Hard Up Garage, where we've got stories about cars. Yes, that's right, car stories. As you viewers at home have probably realised by now, most of my stories start with the same thing. This. This. Everybody phones me on my phone 500 bloody times a day. And uh, this story starts with a lovely man called Nick Williams, who's uh, the cake-loving photographer of your dreams. I mean, he truly is one of the best photographers in the world, doing stuff for Lamborghini, Lotus, Ferrari, Aston Martin, everyone. When I get the phone call from Nick Williams, right? Sorry, guys. Hi, Nick Williams. Yep. Yep. So Nick Williams just phoned and told me that there is a 1979 Mini for sale on eBay. It's coloured in red, white and blue. It's in the Union Jack livery, very Austin Powers. Nick also liked to mention that it was very horny. No, no, he was horny about the Mini from Austin. But yeah, it did make him horny, baby. So when Nick phones me and says, sorry to bother you, mate. There was a Mini online. Jump on it. When Nick tells you to do something, you do it. This guy has got the intellectual skill of frickin' Stephen Hawking. He is a clever guy. He's got the eye of Picasso. He is an amazing artist when it comes to photography. He is a, just a world-renowned photographer. And when he phones you and tells you to buy a Mini, he is the Mini man. So I bought this Mini without even seeing it. Union Jack livery. Turns out the car's been sat in a BMW dealer as a piece of marketing for the last 10 years. You know, been sat in the corner, had some local, like more modern BMW mini stickers in the window, that kind of stuff. And uh, it just got sat in the corner. And the, the guy was bored, so I threw it on eBay. It started at 99p. Phoned him up and said, what do you want for it? What do you want for it? We went to and from, and after a little while of just sorry, mate, bear with me. After a little while of discussion, he came to the point of wanting two grand. So yes, you'll take two. Cool, he'll take two grand for the car. So I put the phone down like that, and I agreed on the two thousand pound. Right. So I thought, brilliant. I got myself a mini for two grand. It cost me five hundred quid to get it back because it was quite far away, and I wanted it the same day. The problem you have with deals like this, okay, which I've learned, is the minute you get off of the deal. You transfer the money and you go get it quick, all right? Because these people will soon be overrun by phone calls asking if the car's still for sale, can I give you more money, I want it. When it's something as rare as this car, you need to jump on it quick. So I pushed it, pushed it, pushed it, paid a guy 500 quid, got him to London, picked it up and brought it back. The car turned up and it was everything I wanted it to be for two grand. It was solid, there was no real rot in the car, the bonnet had a bit of rust in it. Um, and looking around it, it was put together very well, very original, engine numbers matched, the chassis number, the VIN number. But one thing that really intrigued me was the logbook, or like the title in America, but over here in England we call it a logbook or a V5 ownership certificate. And what that certificate does, it tells you the details, the registration date, the day it was built, uh, the, or it was registered on the road. It also tells you the color, the engine number, all these details that are very important in a resale value of a car. So I sort of checked the engine number out, and I get to the colour segment and it said multicoloured. So I assume that this car was just probably painted a Union Jack for the sake of it. Maybe a uh, very Austin Powers-esque fan had painted it at some point. Turns out it left the factory in the red, white and blue livery. And I mean, that has got to be unheard of. So I phoned the British Motor Museum up. Hello British Motor Museum, this is Sam from the Hard Up Garage. If I talk to them like that, they probably put the phone down on me. But yeah, we had a bit of a conversation to and fro in emails and uh, text messages, this kind of thing. Got on with a guy really, really well. And he informed me that he had no record in the world of ever a car leaving the factory of like the British Motor Company back in the day being multicolored. He'd never, ever heard of a Mini ever leaving the factory being a Union Jet livery. So he said, what you've got there is something very, very rare, which pushed me forward to renovate the car and restore it to the best ability I could. And that included completely taking the doors off, the boot, the hood, the bonnet, the trunk, all this kind of stuff off the car and painting it in full. And that meant painting the blue, white and red livery in three different stages. 
blue base, then the white, then the red on the top. It's got to be right. The problem with paint in a two-pack form, which is like the older cellulose kind of paint, is it's a very thick paint. So in each application of the paint you put on the car, you do get a slight ridge. So if you paint a car with water-based paint, it's very thin, you can put a clear coat over the top, and you probably won't get a line. So imagine if you've got a piece of paper on a worktop, yeah, and you're running your finger along the worktop, you can feel the ridge of the paper. That's the same idea I'm telling you here with the paint. So over the years, the Union Jack Mini must have had maybe four or five coats of paint over the top. And you could see the overspray on the windows. And when you rubbed your finger along it, you had these big transitions of the different colors. So, you know, I could tell the car had been painted poorly and it wasn't in great condition. I sent it to Evolution Body Shop here in Fairham where they stripped the car all the way back to bare metal and they said that the shell was in staggering condition. We needed to re replace the bonnet because there was a bit of rust on the front but the rest of the car was in amazing condition and uh, we basically resprayed the whole car from the bottom to the top all underneath the floor pans, we did everything. I bought new wheels for it, we painted all the wheels, looked absolutely gorgeous. And I assume that car might go crazy, we might get 15, 20,000 pounds for that car. So I'm at the London Classic Car Show, which is in the XL Centre in London, you know, the heart of London, right opposite the O2. And um, we're there, and the car has got a reserve on it for 10,000 pounds, and the estimate's between 12 and 15,000 pounds. So as you can imagine, I'm buzzing, I'm like a little school kid, I'm walking around, I'm looking at the car, I'm checking it out. I bump into my buddy from Pop Bang Color, um, and basically what he does is he designs artwork of cars, yeah, like so he will get a mini, shall we say, and he'll get toy cars, cover the tires in paint, and make beautiful pieces of artwork out of paint from tires. He's an amazing artist. He comes up to me and gives me this picture of a Union Jack Mini that he'd painted for Goodwood a few years back. And like, what an amazing gesture. I've known this guy a long time and his work is amazing. For him to come over and give me that was just, well, the uh, hairs on my arm are staring up now. Just lovely of a, a lovely guy to do that. And um, I'm excited, the car's gonna go through. It's had loads and loads of response. A guy flew in from Dallas to film the car. Like, it was just amazing. And um, it got to the auction, I'm sat there and most of the time I don't like watching auctions because I would rather be surprised at the end. I've never had a good experience at an auction with the Rolls Royce or the Porsche over the years and I was kind of hoping that life might be a little bit different. But in this case it was just the same as all the other bloody experiences I've had at auctions, you know. You break even or you lose some money. There's a lovely guy there called Nick Wells who works at Coy's uh, auction and valuation house in London. So in this case, I'm thinking, oh my God, I've got to take it back to Portsmouth. That's another couple hundred quid. It's a pain in the ass, you know? And I'm thinking to myself, what the hell am I going to do? Nick Wells comes over and goes, Sam, I've got some interest in your car, but it's not near the money you want. What will you take for it? I said, I'll take nine. You know, two in front and two in front, a bit haggling, we agreed on 8,250 quid. And the reason we come up with that figure is I was trying to weigh up the pros and cons of what could be the next project, you know? Every day I get phone calls from people. I mean, this thing is basically off the hook ringing because people want to sell me cars or they know I buy <laughs> no one else wants to buy. And I think to myself, if I don't dump this piece of shit now, then I might not have an opportunity to buy another piece of shit tomorrow, you know? So. I dumped it at 8250, I built a relationship with Nick Wells at Corey's, he knows that I'm not a messer. And you know what? We live to see another day. Oh, I don't garage. Please go to our channel homepage and click on the playlist to watch more hard up garage videos. If you like what we're doing, click on that subscribe button. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe, and you can also help us by leaving a comment and click the like button. Please share this episode on social media with your friends and family. But while you're there, why not follow us at Hard Up Garage on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. If you follow us on social media, you'll see when we've got brand new videos for you lovely people. And don't forget to visit hardupgarage.com where you can get some background on what we do and buy some of our much loved merchandise. Goodbye from Sam from Hard Up Garage and thank you for listening to my lovely car stories stories about cars. Mm -hmm.